continuing in my GCC mock series, today I'm going to be speaking to you about Active Recall and why it's the best way to revise with evidence to back it up, as well as going over some methods of revision that contrary to popular belief are not quite as good as expected. Hey guys, Adoka Fintelman here. I'm a year 11 GCSE student and a couple weeks ago, I put a survey on Reddit, Instagram and my YouTube asking people to tell me their revision methods for various subjects and why they use them. The main reason I did this was to find out what kinds of methods people were using. Maybe this is you. You're trying your hardest in school, putting in the effort to study by getting out your fancy pastel highlighters and your pretty calligraphy pens to start writing your notes and reread over your textbook. But come exam time, you're finding it difficult to get those high grades you want and deserve. But why? You're putting in the effort and following what the teachers have told you to do. Well, this could be because you're passively learning and should be incorporating, you guessed it, active recall. These two magical words help me do well in school and still have time to make videos and have a life. Active recall simply just forces your brain to achieve information, encouraging it to go into your long-term memory. An example I like is imagining active recall like the gym and by forcing yourself to be uncomfortable and actually try really hard to retrieve information. It helps strengthen your brain just like at the gym you wouldn't get big and strong by lifting tiny weights but rather the heavy ones. Active recall is just like that. If you're finding it difficult, it's working. Now we know that active recall is just the principle of efficient learning, what are the two types of learning? Well, you have active and passive. Passive learning basically just involves reading over the information and trying to internalize it, which is highly inefficient and gives you a full sense of security as you think you're learning a lot, but as a matter of fact, you're not really. So how can you incorporate active recall? What I like to do is by following the three R's. The first R is review, i.e. learning the content for the first time and getting a rough understanding about the subject. So it's not just like jumping to the deep end, but having a foundation to start with. I feel like a common misconception is that you need to know the topic super well to be able to use active recall. However, this is not true at all. What I usually do is listen in class and try and get a rough understanding. Then I move on to the next step, which is recall. Trying to lift those heavy weights by making flashcards and answering practice questions to be able to have that information for the long term. This is why it's cool that on the survey I put out, a lot of people answered that they use practice questions and flashcards to revise as their main method. And as you guys know, practice questions and flashcards are really efficient. When doing this step, you do need to be careful that you're not tricking yourself into thinking that you're learning. For example, the classic methods of having the mark scheme out when revising and kind of flipping it open and seeing, oh yeah, I would have put that, or just flipping over the flashcard and telling yourself that you knew that, but you didn't. The last step is repeated testing. You can't expect to learn all of this information on your first review. You need to constantly be learning and revising if you want the information to stick, i.e. space repetition. So how can you incorporate space repetition? The main way I do this is by using Anki. Now I mention it a lot and I will make a full video on it. However, a rough overview of it is basically a flashcard app where you can write cards. However, Anki will give you those cards based on how well you understood it. It gets this information by you filling out how you found the card, hard, good, or easy. As you consistently click a card as good, you will then receive the card at a later date and get cards that you struggle with more often. Basically, Anki's algorithm takes away the need for you to know when you'll forget something. Another way you can incorporate this is through practice questions and exams. Its main benefits include the fact that you can apply the knowledge and get a sense of what the questions will be like, especially for something like GCSEs where they reuse similar questions. The last way you can also incorporate active recall is through teaching others. Richard Feynman famously said if you want to master something teach it and he was a big physicist so he clearly knew how to learn information well. You don't have to go out and badger your friends because they might already know this information however if they need help go ahead and teach them. On the other hand what I like to do is discuss what I learn in school with my mom and try to apply it to real life. This helps tremendously with biology as we both have an interest in that. For example, I'll go home and just tell her what I learned about that day in biology, chemistry, physics, or maybe even history. This works well because it doesn't quite feel like work to me and I'm generally interested in the topic. Also, my mum, if she doesn't care, at least pretends to be interested. You may be wondering, Adoka, how has active recall helped you? For me, I notice I'm actually revising a lot less than I was last year. Although sometimes I post a long study with me, I do say I don't do that every day. It's mostly if I have a lot of cards to write or work to do and for your guys' motivation. Because Anki is so good, I'm able to run through my cards in the morning for about an hour and I've covered like five chapters in science. It's very efficient, work smarter and not harder. Is there any evidence for all of this? 
One of the studies most often talked about when discussing the effectiveness of active recall is the critical importance of retrieval for learning by two people whose names I can't pronounce in 2008. In the study, a group of college students were given 40 foreign vocab word pairs to learn, then were tested on them. Once a student recalled a word pair correctly just once, that word pair was treated in one of four ways. The student continued to study and be tested on all 40 words. The student no longer studied that word pair but continued to be tested on it. The student continued to study that word pair but was no longer tested on it. Or the student no longer studied and was no longer tested on the word pair. Students then returned one week later for a repeat follow-up test. The results of the study showed this. Students who used active recall were able to remember about 80% of the new terms compared to 34% for the control group who passively went back through a series of cards until they learned everything again. This same research group did another study to compare active recall with both passive methods and elaborative, aka creating concept maps. The active recall group success rate again outshone the others by a margin greater than 50%. I've linked the study in the description if you're interested, but you can clearly see that active recall works. So let's just have a quick look at the survey results. For the sciences, most people said they use practice questions and flashcards a lot, which is good as evidence has proven those to be the most effective ways of revising for that subject. For maths, there is a clear cut winner, practice questions. Obviously, this is a great method for maths. Practice does make perfect, as well as watching videos really helps you understand the topic. For English, it's quite divided. I think this is mainly just because there are so many ways to revise for English. And I personally find it a lot more difficult as with English, it's far more subjective. With history slash geography and RS, it was even more divided. I think I should have split geography and history as history can also be quite subjective compared to geography. One of my favorite responses to why you chose those methods was this. Because GCSEs are based on understanding content, memory and application. Methods I use such as reading textbooks help to understand, flashcards help me to memorize information and then practice questions help me with applying knowledge and understanding what certain questions ask for when they're worded confusingly and finding patterns in questions asked every year. I feel like that summed up really nicely. So if you want to be part of this survey like thing in the future, check out my Instagram. I read through all the responses and really like the engagement from you guys. There was only a few bad responses, but it's the internet. So what do you expect? I want to thank you guys so much for support. At the time of this recording, we've reached 5,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video about revision, check out this real time study with me to help provide some motivation for upcoming exams. Don't forget to subscribe and have a productive week.